I have personally been on that road. I'm from River State. Uh, so I, I'm, not a, I'm not a stranger to Southeastern and South-South infrastructure at all. I have been on that first Niger Bridge. And the bottleneck at the end, where you have an enclosure that narrows like that, creates massive traffic jam on that bridge and makes businesses to suffer, makes goods to spoil before they can get to where they're going to, uh, agitates people because they cannot get to where they want to get to in time, and all of that. So the president now said, look, for this second Niger Bridge we're doing, we're also going to create 10 kilometers of brand new uh, six-lane expressway because you have a, a bridge that has now been expanded from four lanes, which was originally conceived. The president said, no, it's not good enough. We're going to expand it to six lanes. So the bridge is six lanes. Then he now is building brand new six-lane expressway on both sides of the bridge, the Onicha side, the uh, Delta side, so that you'll be able to very easily facilitate the mass movement of goods and services from the east to the western part of this country. So all of that is going on. And then he now said, look, these are the high value projects we're talking about. These are new construction projects we're talking about. The president also said that's not good enough. We need to go deeper into the southeast and the south south and deal with those roads that are very strategic to the development of those economies so that they can key into the Nigerian economy and add the value that we know they have the capacity to add. So when he now said, look, the Enugu Protocol Express, which myself, I have, so, I have almost died myself personally. I have almost died on that road. I can attest to that. Uh, all the way from Enugu Potako to Aba Potako uh, Expressway. You would have seen before 2015, it was mud. It was mud. You will go there, you will see a tanker that is on its head, upside down, on its head. You will see mud everywhere. You will see uh, potholes larger than, larger than vehicles, right? So if you go there now, you will not be able to, you won't believe that you're standing in the same place. There are segments that are not done. We have not completed the road. We have completed segments of the road, right? But the segments that are completed, you're talking of, uh, in the case of Aba Portakot, particularly as you go through Oibo local government of Portakot, where you have the, the welcome gate and all of that, you will see eight-lane expressway, brand new eight-lane expressway that was, that was mud and filth and heaps of, of waste and rubbish before, under, uh, by, by 2015. Right? So, so much is going on. The president uh, has just, we have just taken out another Sukuk bond uh, that we were subscribing at about 150 billion. It was oversubscribed to the tune of four times because of the confidence that investors have in the president's program. And now we have been able to get about 165 billion naira in addition to add uh, to the uh, over 200 billion that we have put into the Sukuk uh, bond funded roads, uh, which Enugu Portakot is one of them. Uh, and all of that. So a lot of work is continuing to go on, not just in the south-south and the southeast. Let's go to the middle belt, because one of the major challenges is that aside from the second Niger Bridge in the southeast, the link, the link point of, of, south, of southeast to the mainstream of the country is not just in Delta. That's, ju that's the primary one. That is the one that matters a lot if we have to prioritize. But the other side is the upper side, which is how do you link effectively those old linkages between the middle belt of this country, right, uh, to, this, uh, to, the, to the southeast? Because you used to have a corridor. When we talk Potokot Meduguri Expressway, this is the corridor we're talking about. You will have a corridor where you'll go from southeast to middle belt, middle belt to northeast, very seamlessly, because it was, it was built like that. The original master plan of this country had a plan like that. So, there's the rail component that everybody is talking about, Potakot Meduguri, but then there's also the road component. And that road component has been neglected now for 50 years, 40, 50 years. So now the president uh, has been able to get funding uh, for the 348 kilometer road that goes from Nasarawa, that's uh, the uh, Kefi, uh, Kefi, Joss, uh, no, sorry, Kefi, I believe it's uh, Akwanga, Joss, Bauchi, Gombe Road. Right, that links all the way from the middle belt into the northeast very seamlessly. Right now, that's the one leg that is middle belt to the northeast. The other leg is from southeast to the middle belt. Now, how does that one work? This from for decades now, the southeast has not been able to link effectively with the middle belt. Why? Because of bridge infrastructure that had dilapidated. So, the president invested about almost 60 billion naira to. Uh, complete a, a, a brand new local Oweto bridge, which will link uh, uh, Benue State and Nasarawa State, right? 60 billion Naira bridge. 
That bridge is going to ensure that the old uh, ninth mile in Enugu to Makoli uh, road that everybody talks about, that that road that is being reconstructed, as we speak now, it has been approved by FEC, reconstruction is on as we speak. That road, once it links up by local Oweto Bridge, it will now link up to the middle belt, where you will now have access to the, uh, the uh, road I mentioned, uh, Kefi, Akwanga, Joss, Bauchi, Gombe Road. So it all links up in a kind of a, in a, kind of a, a, a side V, if you will. That's how it links up. And that's what the president is doing. So while he's building the uh, uh, Kefi, Akwanga, Joss, Bauchi, Gombe Road, 348 billion that the president is investing in that particular road, he's also with the Chinese uh, construction company to build the ninth mile to Makodi Road to link up over the local Oweto Bridge. So the Southeast economy is going to be completely integrated with the rest of the country, not just through the West, but through the Middle Belt to the North. And that is the vision of the president. That is what he's implementing as we speak. But unfortunately, uh, many of these projects and many of these things that are ongoing, you will not hear about them because uh, we have uh, some sponsored individuals in the media who will rather focus on herdsmen and goats and all of that. So there, there, there are a lot of things going on and we'll continue to engage our people and uh, ensure that they know about what is going on as they begin to experience it for themselves. All right, so now we have uh, questions uh, from WhatsApp. My dear brother, uh, Love Day Okpone, from Akoka Yaba says, what are the mechanisms to revive the economy? The, well, we're focused now on transportation because if we talk the entire economy, I can go on for 24 hours sitting in this chair talking about the economy. But let's talk about uh, the transportation component. I think the main thing is understanding that you have in transportation, you have your roads, you have your bridges, you have your railways, you have your, sea, your, rail, your, your railways, your seaports, and your airports. This is the bulk of transportation. You have your dry, inland dry ports uh, as well as your seaports. Now, when we talk about the investment in these areas, this is what we have been breaking down for the last 30 minutes. I really hope uh, that, uh, that you have been able to tune in from the beginning. I'm sure you would have uh, received a lot of uh, enlightening information, which I challenge everybody, no matter what I'm saying, go and verify what I'm saying. Don't just take my word for it. Go and verify it. It's all there on Google for you to verify. Uh, now, my dear brother Fred from Jabi says, some of the problems we have in Nigeria of today is majority uh, transport related. In what capacity is the government resolving this? Yes, I've, see, I've seen them. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, B, explain the negative impact on the national development through transportation. C, what are the major problems faced in transportation in Nigeria? What is government's plans to rectify the problems? So a lot of it, we have touched on them. Uh, you know, you have transportation failures impact different sectors in different ways. One of the things that I have done over the last uh, 30 minutes with you or so uh, is really focus or 40 minutes is focus on uh, how it affects agricultural. For example, when we talk post harvest losses because of the failure of uh, uh, internal road infrastructure to be what it needs to be to allow farmers to efficiently uh, transport their produce from one place to another. That's one problem. If you look at the uh, mining sector, that's another that's another problem sector for us when we talk transportation is when you're talking for, you want to do coal mining. Coal mining is not something that you can put in the back of a car like, uh, like, like, uh, like some of the things that people put in the back of a car, like Indomie, for example. Uh, when you're talking coal mining, if that is what you want to do, you're talking about a massive uh, tonnage of material that has to be transported in a very specialized way. And if you don't have the, the facility, the physical infrastructure to facilitate the movement of these items, that heavy tonnage, then you have a problem. That is why the president has worked very hard to ensure that we have the kinds of rail infrastructure in place by the time he leaves office, right, after so many decades of neglect that would allow us to create value in these very heavy, heavily uh, weighed uh, uh, goods and services across sectors that, that add real economic value to the life of the country. 
that's a major problem. And if you look at what I have described here today, from the uh, Wari, uh, Itakpe, Ajeokuta, uh, Lokoja, Abuja rail line, to the Lagos, Ibadan, Ibadan to the southwest capitals, to, Min uh, to Ilorin, from Ilorin to Mina, from Mina to Abuja rail line, from Abuja to Kaduna to Kano, uh, uh, from, to, from Kaduna to Zaria, from Zaria to Kano rail line. You look at all of these, uh, you would agree with me uh, that there is uh, there's so much uh, that so much value to be added. And by the way, the president is not just concerned about how to add value to the Nigerian economy, economy within Nigeria. He's also said that the, the rail line from, uh, from Kano is going to extend into the Niger Republic, into Maradi, so that from Maradi you'll be able to bring, you'll be able to uh, make serious money. is just black i want to know what is happening do you want to know what your government is doing yeah are you curious and want to know about programs events and activities being organized by your leaders yeah do you believe that your voice should be heard yeah then look no further have your say it's the formal interactive program that provides the missing link between citizens and the executive of the legislative arms of government Status, ministries, departments, and agencies. This show gives you the power to speak your mind, ask daring questions, contribute to discussions, provide analysis, 
and demand for the truth. To be a part of our show, subscribe to our YouTube channel at Here Nigeria. That is at H-I-Y-A Nigeria. And follow us on all our social media platforms at Here Nigeria. That is at H-I-Y-A Nigeria. Have your say. We want to hear from you. Your opinion matters. We are tired of this our government too. See, eh? We don't even know what is happening at all. Everything is just black. I want to know what is happening. Do you want to know what your government is doing? Yeah! Are you curious and want to know about programs, events, and activities being organized by your leaders? Yeah! Do you believe that your voice should be heard? Yeah! Then look no further. Have your say. It's the foremost interactive program provides the missing link between citizens and the executive of the legislative arms of government, heads of power stations, ministries, departments, and agencies. This show gives you the power to speak your mind, ask daring questions, contribute to the discussions, provide analysis, and demand for the truth. To be a part of our show, subscribe to our YouTube channel at HIA Nigeria. That is at H-I-Y-A Nigeria. And follow us on all our social media platforms at Here Nigeria. That is at H I Y A Nigeria. Have your say. We want to hear from you. Your opinion matters. We are tired of this our government too. See, eh? we don't even know what is happening at all. Everything is just black. I want to know what is happening. Do you want to know what your government is doing? Yeah. Are you curious and want to know about programs, events, and activities being organized by your leaders? Yeah! Do you believe that your voice should be heard? Yeah! Then look no further. Have your say. It's the foremost interactive program that provides the missing link between citizens and the executive of the legislative arms of government, heads of power status, ministries, departments, and agencies. This show gives you the power to speak your mind, ask daring questions, contribute to discussions, provide analysis, and demand for the truth. To be a part of our show, subscribe to our YouTube channel at Here Nigeria. That is at HI. Thank you very much uh, for staying with us on Have Your Say, a virtual edition. Uh, this is a, an examination, if you will, of the interrelationship between uh, the transport sector and the larger Nigerian economy, how transportation projects can create a diversified national economy. In interactive session with uh, me, uh, my name is Ajuri Ingalale, and I humbly serve as the Senior Special Assistant to President Mohamed Buhari on public affairs in the office of the Vice President. I encourage you to continue to send in your questions. Uh, and of course, call in so that uh, I can engage with you and answer whatever pressing questions that you may have. I, I believe that there's a, a question I received earlier uh, from uh, my very good friend, uh, Anas Tuko Balarabe, uh, who asked the question, can you give us some updates on the Baroport project? Thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Anas, uh, for that question. Uh, so uh, you may recall that within the last uh, year or so, uh, the Barrow Inland Dry Port in Niger State uh, was uh, commissioned by President Mohamedou Buhari, uh, in, in, in uh, obviously in company of the uh, Director General of the uh, Nigerian Inland Waterways Authority, NIWA, and many others. Uh, one of the major challenges we have had uh, it, it with Baro is not the actual facility, which is fully completed, it's fully kitted and equipped uh, with everything it needs to function uh, well. The problem we still have, though, is we have problems with the, uh, the allied infrastructure. Uh, the accessibility of that port is still a challenge because of uh, roadways around that axis that are not what they need to be uh, for, we, for us to take full advantage of that. Our, our uh, with that understanding, uh, we're working very hard on uh, Mina Suleja Road uh, and many of the other roads in that access to make sure that uh, we change that story. Uh, we've done so much work on the Abuja Suleja uh, Road. Uh, we're going to continue to explain.
turn that into, into MENA, and hopefully we'll get into the other roads uh, in that region very soon that, that will enable us to take advantage of the completion of the borrow dry port. You can recall that before Mr. President took off, his borrow dry port was just, uh, was just something that uh, people talked about. It was an aspiration, but he made it a reality. But now we have to be able to uh, you know, link it effectively with the rest of the nation's transport infrastructure so that we can take full advantage of the benefits of it and get the kind of employment in that dry port that we all envisaged. But uh, uh, while you ask about borrow dry port, I will just mention that um, you know, I didn't mention earlier that the, on the Lagos Ibadan axis, uh, we have done two very important things. Uh, not only have we, uh, you know, obviously the high speed rail line and all this, uh, we're working on the stations now, but also the fact that Mr. President envisaged that if you're taking containers off of a port, which was not the original design, which Mr. President added to the design and now we are about completing, uh, you now have to have a destination for those ports. So now the president said, let us uh, build an inland dry port in Ibado so that the containers that are not immediately being onwardly transported to Kano or Mina or Ilorin or Abuja or Kaduna, that they can have a st an inland storage uh, facility, the inland port there, where you can now offtake uh, those containers from a papa port to decongest a, a, a papa port and all of that while we're constructing the Wari uh, deep sea port, while we're constructing the new seaport at Boni uh, and all of that. So all of this is being, uh, is being done. And of course, the lucky deep sea port is also uh, on stream as well. So all of that is being done. So you have borrowed inland dry port. You have Kaduna inland dry port. We cannot forget that Kaduna has built a dry port in collaboration with the federal government. Uh, and that has already been commissioned. So you have the inland dry port in Kaduna, inland dry port in Baru, and of course the new one in Ibadan, uh, and all of that. And we're gonna, we're going to uh, have several more in the southeast as well. Uh, in addition, in addition to the Portacourt Industrial Park that we're working on, in 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 in, in accordance with the uh, the master plan for the Boni Portacourt Aba uh, Uyo Calabar high speed rail line that 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 uh, will be hopefully approving by the end of next month at the Federal Executive Council. So now, uh, with all of that said, uh, the, the, the inland port infrastructure is very, very critical for several reasons, not just for employment generation, but also for ensuring that we have effective depots and storage facilities uh, for the various goods and services that are going to be moving across the country at any particular point in time. Uh, because when you have that, what you also have is you create multiplying industries off of those inland dry ports where you will now have trailer parks, for example. Right where you will have bays and decks where trailers will be able to line up and have a call-up system that we, you will now use to facilitate uh, road transport workers uh, in such a manner that they will not be creating traffic chaos uh, along our expressways across the country. That is an industry in its own that we want to support. Uh, and we can do that with an effective tolling policy, which is why the president has said very clearly that when we finish all of these roads we're talking about, Boni Bodo Road, Seko Niger Bridge, Lagos Ibadan Expressway, Abuja Kaduna, Zaria Kano Expressway, uh, and all of these, uh, you know, Ilorin, Jeba Mokwa, all of these roads that are going on across, across the country, that when we do them, once they are finished, only when they are finished, the president is going to put toll gate on all of them. Now, the difference between what we're doing now and what we used to do is the tolling is not going to be some sort of, uh, a, 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 I don't know what to call it, free for all, like it used to be under, uh, I think, under the Obasanjo administration, where you go somewhere, you'll be paying cash to somebody. You don't know what they're doing with the cash as soon as they leave their booth. Uh, this one is going to be cashless. So it's going to uh, just rid corruption from the process. You're going to pay with either a debit card or a prepaid card and all of that. And the funds will go directly uh, to, the, to, the, to the concessionaire or whoever the authority is that is going to maintain those roads. So that these roads, after Mr. President uh, and his team have worked so hard and labored to make sure that these roads are done, invested so heavily in our commonwealth to make sure these roads are done, we're not now coming 10 years later to go and look for budget allocation, to go and do Lagos Ibadan again. Next time, the, when these roads are going to be done, now we have a full maintenance policy with a cashless tolling system that will ensure that uh, we can focus our attention on new roads instead of thinking of how we are going to reconstruct roads that we have spent so much money constructing. That, that's the kind of wisdom and common sense and pragmatism.
racism that President Muhammadu Buhari has brought to leadership in this country. So now we go on to the next question. Uh, let us see. The, yes, uh, my, my sister Hajia Nana from Okene is asking, what is government doing about Abuja Bokoja Road? There's a lot of work that has been going on. Uh, maybe not in your section of it. It's possible that the segment that is being uh, reconstructed uh, has not reached your side. But surely, 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 if you have driven from Abuja past the airport down uh, uh, to, to, to Lokaja, certainly you will be seeing the various segments that are being reconstructed as we speak. That is a road of priority uh, for this administration, not just because, uh, you know, it's an important road. Every road is an important road. But some, some roads take on extra economic value because of the industries they support. So, for example, local is going, is going to be a key link point uh, between uh, the, uh, the, the, the future of Nigeria's steel under industry and, of course, the rest of the country. That's number one. Number two, we are currently in the process of constructing a special crops processing zone in Kogi State which is uh, a, a program that the World Bank is helping us support with uh, over $200 million, if I'm not mistaken, where we're going to bring, uh, we're going to have an, a special agro processing industry where uh, you will have uh, refining capacity for various agricultural products so that we're exporting finished products instead of raw products, which we have done for the last 50 years. Africa has always been exporting raw materials. The president, uh, in addition to his counterparts around the continent, have our now that we have to really focus on investment in processing and refining so that we can get to the point where we're selling, uh, we're competing with Germany, US, China, Singapore for items that are fully finished. So instead of sending our soybeans to Germany for them to refine our own soybeans into vegetable oil, they put in some plastic, sell it back to us for four times the money. Instead of all of that nonsense that we have been uh, doing with laziness and uh, incompetence over the last uh, 40 years, the president is ensuring that we're going to start and finish uh, the process. That means you're farming, you're producing. Once you're producing, you're sending into your own internal agro processing industry. They process it, refine it, and then not just sell to our own people in our supermarkets and all of that, but they can now sell to the rest of the world and earn the country uh, foreign exchange dollars and the like, instead of spending dollars to import what we can be refining locally. That is the vision. That is the uh, that is the work that the president is doing, uh, which of course you will not hear much about uh, in the press, unfortunately. Now, I think there's a, a, a lot of uh, a lot of different uh, elements that uh, we can still uh, get into, but I, I, what I really want to emphasize is that across the country, if you're talking airports. If you're talking seaports, if you're talking uh, uh, roads, bridges, uh, you know, railways, what this administration has done with very limited resources across the board, all of which, uh, or most of which, is going to be completed within the eight years of this president, uh, is unprecedented. And it's, I'm not saying this just to be clapping and praising the president, no. I'm saying this because as a people, we need to, we need to um, together, we need to rise above the thinking that says we are either APC or we are PDP or we are APGA or we, are, we don't have any partisanship. We need, to, we need to be able to assess things on the basis of what is good for, for me, what is good for us as a nation. I'm not talking about me as an individual. What is good for us as a nation? If the uh, Lagos uh, 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 rail line is good for the nation, let us say so. If Boni Bodo Road is good for the nation, let us say so. If Second Niger Bridge is good for the nation, let us say so. Even if I did not vote for the president, let us acknowledge that, yes, this thing is good for the country. Because what is good for the country is good for us. Right? It's not about political parties. So I, I think we are all best served uh, if we assess developments in the country, not through APC did this, PDP did that, no. But what is good for this country? And I think all of us will move forward in a very progressive direction uh, toward our destiny, if, if we can all do that. I believe we have another question from Amaka in Lagos. Thank you very much, Amaka, for your time and for sending in this message. And Amaka says, considering the COVID-19 pandemic and the reopening of local flights, what are the safety measures being put in place 
for air travelers? Yes, so a very important question. Uh, there's no doubt about the fact that every industry, from air to uh, road transportation, uh, to uh, you know, even our faith institutions, our schools, private and public, all of them will have to make some very uh, key uh, um, adaptations uh, moving forward. They have to evolve. In terms of uh, flight service, we have been very, very clear and open with our people through the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 and, and the frequent briefings that they have been giving to the Nigerian press and the Nigerian people that definitely domestic flights will resume uh, at some point soon. We don't know when. We have not given the date yet. Uh, I think tentatively, uh, June 21st was talked about in relation to the process of starting the industry back. That does not mean that planes will be taking off and coming down. Or what it means is that airports will now begin to gradually reopen their processes. Employees will be, begin to return to work. Places have now been disinfected by fan. Uh, that we've done massive disinfection, uh, uh, disinfection kind of uh, 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 you know, a campaign across our airports uh, and various public infrastructure that have been closed. Uh, and, and that has now been completed. So now, when we talk about getting people on planes, there we have a, an NCAA, that's the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority, the regulator. They will definitely ensure that anybody who's getting on a plane is getting on a plane that has, has thoroughly envisaged the safety of the passengers. Uh, so what I think you should expect is that when you, uh, just as we're doing with uh, churches and mosques, for example, uh, those who have opened in some states, for example, we said, look, there should be, instead of 100% capacity, 100% reopening, we are looking at 25%. So that you can effectively space people out and you maintain the uh, protocols of social distancing and all of that. Not just side to side, though, but back to front. So all of these things have to be very carefully in this case. Clearly, uh, as fly, uh, flights resume, uh, you know, uh, airline companies will not be able to fill up their planes. They're going to have to deal with operating with a fraction of the revenues as a result of these protocols. But it is a, an absolutely necessary sacrifice. Those who can accommodate will accommodate. Those who cannot will decide, obviously, to stay out uh, until there's a full normalization. But I think you have some, for some airline companies like uh, what comes to my mind uh, is E-Bomb Air. E-Bomb Air owned by the Afghanistan state government. In their own peculiar case, the only airlines that they, the only planes that they use are CRJ 900 jets, which are essentially those very thin tube aircrafts where you can only fit like uh, three people on an aisle and all of that. Uh, in such a case, when you have that kind of uh, small fleet of aircraft, you're able to now manage your, uh, your spacing and manage your, uh, your, your, uh, your kind of your revenue, uh, you know, benefit and reward ratio more effectively than those who are operating massive planes that require massive, uh, massive, uh, uh, massive engines, massive uh, oil consumption just to be transporting just a few people. So I think some airlines are going to be favored uh, a bit more than others uh, based on the configuration uh, of the fleet that they that they boast of. Uh, and all of that. So it will be a very diligent process. It will also be a very nuanced process because various co companies come with different capacities to be able to adapt to the protocols. But what I can assure you is there's no way that when uh, domestic airline uh, flight service continues uh, it, that you will see a situation where people will just pretend like nothing happened and they will be filling up planes. That is not going to happen. So I think we have another question. Um, my good friend uh, John from Ondo State, he's asking the question, I would like to suggest, or maybe it's a suggestion, I would like to suggest that government considers the possibility and economic prospects of using jetties and speedboats on the Nigerian waterways. Yes, uh, it, and he cites, he cites the example of uh, Ondo to Lagos waterways and links uh, within the South-South and all of that. My brother, we are in agreement with you. Uh, sometimes what often happens is um, what is ideal on paper is confronted with a reality that is not accommodating uh, of, the reality, uh, of, of what is on paper. 
And so, in as much as uh, theoretically it's a fantastic idea to open up a new source of commerce for us, which we are looking into, it's not, it's not that we're saying we, we are in any way neglecting that. Uh, we, we take it serious, but we, we realize that we have to deal first with the threats that are on our waters, which is why Mr. President uh, has done more in the last five years than the previous 30 years in terms of re e equipping and retooling the Nigerian Navy. Uh, they have been given more, uh, more uh, uh, not just training in terms of bilateral engagements with uh, other navies around the world, including the US and all of that, Pakistan and many others, but also giving them the hard infrastructure they need in terms of weapons, both light weapons and uh, 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 naval, uh, naval platforms on the waters. Uh, to be able to conduct operations that they previously were not equipped to conduct. The last point I want to make in terms of what, uh, the blue economy is the president was able to, as part of his economic diplomacy initiative, was able to strike a deal with Russia. You know, everybody, when we talk the Russian deal, you know, everybody's talking about Ajil Buta, and they're talking about uh, some of these other very important outcomes of the Russian-Nigerian agreement. But one of the major outcomes was they agreed on a new set of platforms that Russia will provide Nigeria with the Nigerian Navy with to most effectively deal with piracy in the Niger Delta and even uh, across uh, uh, the echo uh, axis, right? So now, essentially what that's going to entail is Russia that has a lot of experience in dealing with pirates in the Black Sea. They have a lot of experience in dealing with pirates in the Strait of Hormuz uh, with the Iraq. When they're talking, of, when you're talking of the shipments of interna uh, international oil shipments, and where you have a lot of oil theft uh, in the Middle East and uh, in the in the Middle East and the Asians and the European uh, Western Europe, they are there, and so they have a lot of experience. So they're now willing to come down uh, and not just hands-on train the Nigerian Navy, but also physical infrastructure that they require to upgrade their capacity. Uh, to ensure that the Nigerian waterways in the Gulf of Guinea uh, are well secured so that uh, we can have uh, the full benefit of the kinds of economic opportunities that would emanate uh, from jetties uh, and many of these other uh, economic prospects that you've mentioned on our waterways. Thank you very much. All right, I think we have, uh, we have another question from my brother Femi Akanji. Femi is asking the question, I would like to know the vision of the government as regarding bicycles as a clean transportation tool, employment tool, and sport, physical, sport and physical distancing tool in Nigeria. You may recall there was a famous picture of the uh, Minister of Transportation uh, riding a bicycle in Lagos. And I recall when that picture came out, the uh, general reaction amongst Nigerians was, I, I wait to be this. Now a bike will take a uh, move from uh, Lagos to Abuja. I wait to be this one. But the, 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 the challenge is this. Yes, bicycles are good. Yes, they're good for physical distancing. Yes, they're good for uh, many of these uh, you know, aspects when you talk about uh, sport and all of these. And there's no doubt that they can add value. Uh, but I think one of the challenges we have is when you look at uh, our road networks and you consider that they are overly congested and that even gov previous government attempts, like the one I mentioned, when the Minister of Transportation was leading people to, uh, hey, you're seeing the image there, uh, to use bicycle, and he was encouraging that, is good. Now, the challenge has been that if you do it, you're contending with a road network uh, and even sidewalk uh, uh, infrastructure that has been overwhelmed by one, over congestion on the roads, two, underdeveloped rail transportation as an alternative. As, as a result, you now overpressurize the roads again. Three, uh, uh, the uh, uh, overpopulation in our urban centers of individuals using uh, sidewalks and other uh, ways that you will now be using for bicycles. In another, in another climb, you'll be able to bicycle freely on a bicycle lane, uh, for example. Uh, many of our cities uh, and urban centers don't have such. So there has to be a retrofitting uh, of, our, of our existing roadways and an expansion of our existing roadways to enable the kind of widespread use of bicycles that we eventually want to see, but we also recognize today 
uh, are not, uh, are not uh, effectively factored in uh, to the transportation network of the country. That is going to be a progressive process. You know, sometimes in life, uh, of course, before you before you're thinking of walking, you're thinking of crawling. Before you're thinking of crawling, you're thinking of how you're going to turn from your back to your stomach. Uh, and before you're thinking of running, you're thinking of walking. So at every level, you have to consider uh, where you are and where you want to go. Uh, and it's good to have a vision of where you want to go. But the, the issue is, if we do not decongest our road networks, right, by providing effective rail transportation, which this administration is doing, and expanding our roads, which this administration is doing, then it's not going to be possible for us to uh, create the kind of enabling environment for massive cycling uh, to take place. And so it's something that we have our eye on, uh, but we understand that we have a lot of work to do before we get to the point uh, where that can become a, a, a manifest uh, reality. But clearly, my brother, uh, we have you in mind. Uh, and we're walking in that direction. So, you know, uh, this, uh, this engagement uh, has been very uh, welcome. Uh, it's just one of many. We're going to do many, many, many more. Uh, but I want, I want our, our viewers uh, out there to come away with a few things. Above all, in order for us to rise above the unemployment crisis that we have in this country. It is going to require us uh, getting massive, massive uh, foreign investment. It is going to require the, an enabling environment that will welcome industries and factories and organizations into this country. One of the most underappreciated aspects of what is going on right now is the fact that the African Continental Free Trade Agreement is going into effect in 2021. Everybody's talking COVID-19, I understand, I understand. But next year, African Continental Free Trade Agreement is moving into the implementation phase. What does that mean for the layman? We are going to have $1 trillion of, of, foreign, ex of foreign exchange investment directly spent in the, African, uh, in the African economy. They are going to choose between South Africa Nigeria, Ghana, Senegal, Kenya, Egypt, Morocco, and many of these countries that we're competing with have already built up their power infrastructure, for example. They already have roads and rail lines, for example. The generations when we, was, we were uh, diverting money and uh, behaving stupidly, they were building their countries. So we are behind, and we understand that. But the fortune that we have is that we have gifted people and we have a, a country that has potential to be wealthy. And we have the largest market on the continent. All of that uniquely positions us in a situation where once we wake up, which we have now done, we can make up lost ground quicker than any other nation in the world can make up lost ground. We have it in us. And now we are doing it. So for us now, we have to get massive investment in both hard infrastructure and soft infrastructure. We talk hard infrastructure, yes, we talk power plants, dams, roads, bridges, airports, seaports, railways. Good, we're doing that. The, hard, the soft infrastructure, the one that people are not talking too much about, are those regulatory reforms that, go, that businesses take into account when they come into countries. How will I be able to access land? Can I do it without paying a bribe? 